Welcome back, Fanatics. Josh here. This week was supposed to be my most anticipated Marvel Legends of 2022. But instead, I'm going to reveal the most important action figure that will come out this year. And I'll explain why. Drum roll, please. It's the Marvel Legends Vulcan. Now hold on, don't click away yet. I know he doesn't seem that revolutionary on the surface, but hear me out because he really is that crucial to the entire action figure industry. This is Fanatic Now. Vulcan is a great character. Gabriel Summers first appeared in X-Men Deadly Genesis. He is the third Summers brother revealed and the youngest joining Cyclops and Havoc, along with Geokinesis, Chronokinesis, Flight, Regeneration, and Force Field Generation, Vulcan is an Omega level mutant with the ability to psionically manipulate, control, and absorb vast amounts of energy, including light, heat, force, and electricity. He ain't nothing to the fuck with. And he was definitely needed, so I'm genuinely excited to have him on my shelf. I'm really digging the look and articulation of this figure, and I'll deep dive into that in a bit. But I'm not sure he would have made my most anticipated list of 2022 at all if it had not been for another reason. Let's look at what's really important here. This is the new medium build base body. That's right, bring on the Vulcan mold, because it's the end of the Bucky Cap mold. Mm. Don't get me wrong, Bucky Cap was amazing for his time. It was the end of using ball jointed hips. Goddamn hip balls. That shit feels like it should have belonged in the era of the Oregon Trail game. So, way to pioneer forward, buckaroo. But Jesus H. Christ, it was beyond time. Like, how many times can you reuse a body mold? No, seriously, how many times? What kind of metal is that tooling made of? Animantium? Keep it hot. Because once the metal cools, it's indestructible. In my previous videos, I just finished presenting the complete history of Marvel Legends. So I understand why Hasbro used it for so long. That's huge cost savings. But at this point, it's just beating a dead horse. By the time I did this for a whole ass video. That's the last time. Pinky swear. If you're a prolonged Marvel Legends collector, Bucky Cap needs no introduction. He's lived many lives already. What started in the return of Marvel Legends phase with the Arnim Zola wave in 2012? Yeah. 10 years ago. This same buck has been used for what? Almost 100 action figures? Whew. We can definitely fast forward through that part. I'll just put the list in the description below. But yeah, it's been overused and will continue to be used for probably at least a few more characters because with all of its drawbacks compared to modern times, it has been good to us. Like, really good. Yeah, it had small suck ass feet, but we don't make fun of guys with small feet because you know, you know what it say about guys with small feet. They have the ability to sneak up on opponents much easier. But seriously, other than the feet not being engineered for the ease of standing in various unique poses, this isn't me coming down hard on the Bucky Cap body mold. Structural limitations aside, it was quite posable. And it marked the beginning of moving forward from that horrible start that Hasbro had when they took over the line from Toy Biz. Hasbro continued to trip along their early path to becoming so amazing with a bunch of other bad decisions, but through it all, the Bucky Cap mold endured. Ah, 
So, let's just give him a round of applause because he's earned this retirement with workhorse-like grace. Hell, even if you ask him, he's tired. Hey, Bucky, you want to hang around for another decade? No, I don't think I will. See? Now, Vulcan just went up for pre-order a few days ago as a part of the Bone Breaker wave, so nobody has him in hand yet to test out. But let's look at what we know about this new and improved standard size male base body mold. He comes with an upper thigh break swivel, double jointed pinless knees, a boot brake swivel, ankle rocker, double jointed pinless elbows, um, bicep brake swivel, all the standard stuff, uh, the wrist brake made for swappable hands, and of course, what was so missing but needed for this body style, butterfly shoulders cut into the front and back for that amazing full motion movement. This is so important. These are action figures, so they need to look kinetic with their posing. And to finish it off, the ab crunch torso rocker and waist rotation combination is very important. I think what they've given us here is gonna work out really well for the foreseeable future. When I first saw the rendering, I was concerned with the upper thighs. They look disproportionately long, but I think that was just the rendering because the model that Dwight showed us, it seemed fine. And the neck concerns me a tiny bit, both its length and the way the cuts are inside, but I don't know. I really think once we get it in our hands, it's going to work out fine. Overall, the body mold looks exactly like what I wanted out of this standard heroic build. Oh, 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 and properly sized feet. Can you tell I'm excited? Whew. Vulcan Mold, be the hero I know you can be. Thank you. I'll do my best. The good news is that if this new body mold is as good as I think it'll be, we're about to get upgrades to so many characters. The bad news is if this new body mold is as good as I think it'll be, we're about to get upgrades to so many characters. I feel like this is both a time to mourn the Bucky Cat mold and celebrate the Vulcan mold. The king is dead. Long live the king. Long live the king. And that's a great thing. The success of this new body mold and whether enough collectors stick around after this recent price hike will tell us a lot about the health of the Marvel Legends line and therefore the action figure industry as a whole. If it sucks, Hasbro will have a long list of figures planned that collectors will reject, forcing them to regroup and spend a lot of money to recover. And that is why Vulcan is the most important action figure that we will receive all year. But I won't lie, if it wasn't due to these key factors, Vulcan probably wouldn't make it on my most anticipated figures of 2022. So let me refocus on that since it was the original plan for this week. Join me next week for a preview of what we will be getting this year, what we know and what we should be excited about. As always, I want to remind you that this is a brand new channel. And we really, really want to make it about you, the collector. This is the headquarters for fanatics. So please take the time to hit the thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Your outpouring of love has been incredible. And I enjoy responding to those positive comments all week while I prepare for the next video. As I promised when we first started, this channel was going to be about you. So I'm going to ask Brighton to throw a few comments up from last week. Thank you, sir. Let's see. This one is from JBR3 Collector. Oh, that's Joey Rodriguez. I kind of know Joey from the Facebook groups. He's a literal encyclopedia of Marvel Legends body mold information, so great comment to start with. He says... My first Marvel Legends was Series 1 Captain America back in 2002. I was one of those people who really missed the toy biz days when Hasbro had first gotten the license, but now 
Modern Hasbro blows most of the old Toyba stuff out of the water. Yeah, Joey, I couldn't agree more with that statement. At the beginning, Hasbro really showed us what not to do with a line, but they are killing it now. Uh, he goes on to say, 2022 is a crazy time for Marvel Legends, 20 years since Marvel Legends started, it's the 15th anniversary since Hasbro's first wave of Marvel Legends, and it's the 10 year anniversary since Marvel Legends returned. Man, you're right. I've spoken in depth about the 20 year anniversary, but this is a special year in many ways. All right. Um, I think it'd be so cool for them to release figures in all of the different Marvel Legends packaging styles from throughout the years, as well as the different huge character anniversaries that are happening this year too. It's a great time to be a collector. Absolutely. I'm not much of a Marvel um, Legends mock collector, but it'd be cool with the different packaging if it's cost effective for them. I don't want to see prices keep going up. I really just want those earlier characters to be made better. That's for me. Make me proud, Hasbro. And Joe, if you see this, I want to get you on the show. I have a lot I'd like to pick your brain about. Um, next up, we have Adrian Betts. Bravo, mate. Another fine video. This one was absolutely charming. Once again, a great balance of information and humor guided by passion for the line. You continue to crack me up. Well done. Adrian, I'm not kidding when I tell you. I look forward to your comments every single week. Passion for the line? That comes easy for me. But including jokes is scary because you never know how other other people are going to react to what you think is funny. Humor's scary. Let's do one more. Uh, Jeffrey Schweitzer says, Awesome video. It's so interesting to learn the behind the scenes history of Toy Biz and Hasbro. As a fairly new collector to Marvel Legends 2019, my first figure was a Venom. Since then, I'm pushing upwards of 96 figures, including the HasLab Sentinel. I missed out on Galactus and hopefully we'll have to look towards the secondary market. Like always, great video, yo. Dude, you've come a long ways really fast, so bravo. Hasbro keeps proving why it's never too late to jump on the Marvel Legends train. So welcome aboard. I do think that Galactus will follow the Sentinel model early on. It'll be really expensive on the Aether market and then drop once collectors have that extra one in hand that they want to move. But I don't think the price will stay down for long. I bought two, not to scalp, but to have something that people want in hopes of doing an equal trade for things that I missed out on. Grab it while you can though, because I think it's gonna be special. Before I go, you can see those comments came from my last video, The History of Marvel Legends. I'm really proud of how that series came out, so go check out both of those. I'll link them to the side here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week for Fanatic Now, Figure Friday at 5, with my most anticipated figures of 2022. Later, fanatics.